Welcome back to the ledge climbing tutorial series. In the last video, we got our hanging part figured out. In this video, we are going to start climbing up the ledge. So let's go into our layout and I'm going to double click to go into our player and let's right click in the animations panel, add a new animation. I'm going to call this one climb and I will hit this little folder icon and find the climb folder from the downloaded assets. And we should have six frames in this one. And I'm going to shift click all six of those and open. And this is a little bit larger sprite than the others because the actual climbing animation takes place in actual space. And the reason is that our origin point that we will set down here is going to stay in the same place throughout the whole animation. And once it gets to this part of the animation, it will go back into our idle animation and finish up the whole visual process. So in our climb animation, I'm going to get our origin tool and set it at the very bottom and change that X to 13, just like it is in all the others. And then right click on the origin in the image points panel and apply to whole animation. So now it should be in the same spot in every frame. As for the collision box, uh, we're gonna do this one a little differently than the others. In fact, we're gonna clean up everything in the animations real quick. So I'm going to right click on a node and just set to bounding box so that we get four nodes at the corners. And I'm gonna go into our grid settings here, configure grid, and I'm gonna go two by two snap to edges and I usually have my grid on white it just pops out easier to see for me and then if we click on the icon it'll turn the grid on and now it will snap to edges so if we click on a node our x and y coordinates come up and I want this bounding box to be in the place where she is going to end up so if I move this bottom left one up and in and I got 26 and let's go 26 and 60. And then I'll move this top left one in and down a little. And I want that same 26. Let's go 26 and six. And then for this top right, we know that our Y is going to be six. And I want the X, uh, let's go 48. So 48 and six for that top right. And then let's move this one into place. It will be 48 and 60. Let's right click on one of the nodes and apply to whole animation. And I'm gonna turn my grid off now. So that bounding box is going to be in the same spot the whole time, which is fine because it's not going to be in the way because our ledge is going to be where her feet are. And when she starts out, she's going to be on the outside of that ledge. So really this bounding box is going to sit on top of the ledge and play the animation out until she moves in to that box and then she'll go into the idle state and then she'll be inside the box all the way. With that being said, I want to change up the bounding box for some of these sprites because as it is right now, I'm gonna exit out of this just to show you real quick. I don't like the space in between the ledge and her face and body. So I'm going to move the bounding box around a little. I'm gonna turn my grid back on. We have the two by two grid, and I'm just gonna move the top left node in to four. I'll do the same with the bottom left node, and then I'll move the top right node into 20. Same with the bottom right node. Now we can go to run and do the same thing. I'll move these in to 20. Move these into four. And once we have that set up, we can just right click on any one of them and apply to whole animation. Now they're all in the right spot. Let's go to jump. Same thing here, four, 20, 20, four, right click, apply to whole animation, go to hang and do the same thing here. 20, 20, four, and four. Okay, 
That should be good. I'm going to turn my grid back off. And we should be set up on all the animations now. I'm going to exit out of that. So back over on the event sheet, as we set up in the last video, we created the states instance variable for our player, and we set it to hanging. And then we said what it will do when it's hanging. And then we set it to default and then said what it would do when it's in default. And then of course, when the game starts, we want to start out at default. So before we get out of our ledge hanging group here, I want to send it into a new state, which is going to be our climbing state. So when we are up here and we're latched onto the ledge and she's hanging from the ledge and we're pressing D towards the ledge to hang there, I want to be able to activate her climbing up and landing on top of the ledge. So to do it, to me, it makes sense that if we're holding D to hang on, if we press W, the jump key at the same time, that'll trigger that climbing event. So back in our event sheet, while we are hanging, while we're still in our hanging state, that's when I want to check for this W pressed. Highlight this whole block and press B to get another sub event. So this sub event's going to go below our D released check, but it's indented from our hanging state check. So let's double click the sub event to go in, grab our keyboard and on key pressed. And that key is going to be the W key. If we press the W key while we're in the hanging state, because it is a sub event of the hanging state, now we can give the W key a different effect than it has up here in player controls. Because when we are in the default state, W means jump but we're not in the default state, we're in the hanging state. So this can only happen while we're in the hanging state. And W pressed is going to send us into the climbing state. So let's add an action, get our player, go down to set value and our state string and set that to climb. But once we are in that climb state, I don't want any of this to take place anymore which is what we did down here in the hanging state, we just set it to default. That way, none of this would take place once we go to default and we could drop from the ledge when we'd release the key. However, we're still overlapping the trigger and the D key may or may not still be down, but I don't want any of any of this to take place once we go into the climb state. And once we go into the climb state, then we can reset what happens after that. So for now, when we do go into the climb state, I want to get rid of all of this. And since we have all of this inside our ledge hang group, we can use that group as a way to control all of the code that's in it. So I'm going to add an action under this, go into system, and I'm going to type in group. And I want set group active. And in between quotation marks, I want to type in the name of the group, which is ledge hang, and I want to set it to deactivated. So now none of this can take place. Okay, I'm going to close this up for just a second, and I'm going to right click and add a new group. And I'm going to call this ledge climb and add an event to the ledge climb group. And let's go get our player and scroll down to our instance variables. Compare instance variable of our state is equal to climb, which we set here at the end of our ledge hanging. And once we are in the climb state, we can go ahead and play that climb animation. So let's add an action to this, go to our player, set animation to climb. I'm going to play this real quick and we jump up, we're hanging, we let go, we drop, we jump up, pressing the D key, we're hanging. If I press the W key, you see it kind of flickered there for a second because it's trying to play the animation, but we have a few things still wrong. So as long as this instance variable is true, which we set it to climb here. So now it's climb. As long as it's set to climb, it's going to keep playing this animation 60 times every second. I just want it to play it once and be done. So I'm going to add another condition to this block of code. So double click on it, 
and go into system and let's get trigger once while true. Let's see what that does for us. Okay, we're still not getting the animation to trigger. And you know what? I don't think that I set a speed on climb. I did not. Yours might have actually worked. Uh, I have mine by default. I have the speed set to zero in all animations. So mine's set to zero. I'm going to change the speed to seven. So a speed of seven, uh, not looping, and that actually should be good. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. So you see, uh, we're still in the climbing state and we haven't told it to do anything past this, but it did work. So let's go ahead and finish it up. Once this animation has finished, I want to set it back to that idle state and reset the state of the player. So we can actually check to see when that animation finishes. So let's add an event to our ledge climb group, go into our player and say on finished. And in between quotation marks, we want to pick our climb animation. So when the climb animation is finished, let's add an action, get our player and set the animation to idle. Okay, I'm gonna test that real quick. And it drops us right back down. The reason is because our origin point when we jump up is still at the bottom of her feet which is the same place the origin point is in our climb animation. I also was not able to control the player after we finished our climb. So we need to set that back to our default state as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's add an action, go into our player, scroll down to instance variables, set the value of state to default. So when we are up here and our animation changes to climb. See, the origin point's still in the same place. The only thing that changed was where the rest of the frame is. So when she finishes climbing up here, we want the idle animation to move up here. Now we know that we are right here at the top of this ledge, and we know that we moved her down 65 pixels in our code up here. So if we move her up 65 pixels, which will be a negative Y value because when objects move up the screen, the Y value decreases. And then we'll need to move her over to put her in place where the climb animation ends. So back in the event sheet down here, let's set her new position. Add an action, go into the player, and I'm going to type in set position. So for the X, we said we needed to move her over. So I want to get the spot where she is and then add some pixels to make a new location for her. So I'm going to get her current location just by typing self. And that's going to be dot X. We want the X value of where she is. And then I'm going to add 20 pixels. I've already made this so I know what the value is. I started off, I believe, with 18 pixels and my math was wrong and it ended up being uh, 20 pixels is what looks right. So for our Y value, remember we wanted to bring her up the full length of the height of the sprite. Let's get her position, her Y position, so self dot Y, and then we wanted to go up the screen which is a negative number, and we'll go that 65 like we did earlier. And I'm going to move that up to be the second thing that happens. And I'm gonna play this, and let's see how close we got. And press the W key, and there we go. Still a little frame flickering going on. Uh, we will take care of that, and we actually are not able to hang on the ledge again because we set our ledge hang to be deactivated up here. So we need to reactivate that. So let's add an action to this down here. Go into system. I'm gonna type in group, set group active. And I want the ledge hang group in between quotation marks. And I want that activated. Okay. All right. 
we will take care of some of that frame flickering. Uh, we can actually take care of one part of it right now. So what is happening is it's playing that first frame of the climb animation after it finishes. I'm not sure why we get to that point, but I do know how to handle it. So if we add an action to this block of code down here, go into system and type in wait. And I'm going to go a very small fraction of 0 0.01 seconds. So a small fraction of a second and move that to the very top of this block. Once we set the state to climb, we play that animation. Once it finishes, then we wait just a fraction of the second, switch it to idle, set our new position, turn our default controls back on, and activate our ledge hanging group again so that we may repeat the process all over again. And there we go. Uh, whenever she reaches the top, that frame flickering is gone. However, when we start the climb, we're still getting a uh, small little flicker. And I think what is happening is when we set our state back to default, our platform controls come back into play and our vectors are still moving from our previous control actions. If that doesn't make sense, I completely understand, but I will show you how to fix this problem. Up here, once we overlap the trigger, as soon as we press that D key and start hanging, I want to set those vectors to zero. So let's add an action to this section, go into our player, scroll down to our platform behavior, and set vector X to zero. Add another action, player, scroll down, set vector y to zero and let's see what we got and that solves everything so no more sudden movements or frames out of place we are now able to hang drop hang drop hang climb and then we can do it all over again okay well that is the hanging and climbing mechanic. It's a little unfinished. And from here, we are going to keep polishing it up. In the next video, we will make sure that she can hang from both sides of the ledge. Because right now, all of our code is set up to only do this from the left with the D key. We want to be able to do it from facing the left from the right side. So we'll be actually holding the A key going the other way. So we'll get that set up and then maybe clean up some of the code a little bit, make this uh, quite a bit more efficient. All right, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so and hit that like button. That's gonna be it for this video. Make sure you are saving and I will see you in the next one.